Welcome back everybody. It's another beautiful February day here on the farm. Um, I did a little bit of peeking between last episode and this episode and I noticed that our grass field has really really horrific uh, pH levels. So I think we're gonna go and throw some lime onto uh, onto our field over there, our grass fields. We can hopefully increase our yield a little bit and uh, get things in good condition over there. And I realize as I'm hitting the R key here that I'm kind of breaking my rules. I'm supposed to be using the uh, front end loader to pick those bags up and manually drop them into uh, into the line spreader here so being very 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 bad I did it in the last episode too and I didn't think about it until just now when I hit that R key I'm just so used to hitting that R key and loading up the goods so oh uh, well what you gonna do uh, okay so let's just take a quick look you can see so our pH value is okay it's not horrible but it's definitely not where it needs to be to get the best possible yield for this field so we want to have lots and lots of silage bales so we're going to uh, we're gonna kick on this lime spreader and we're gonna get this field fixed up now the thing we've got to watch as you can see man this this lime is going like mad we're probably gonna have to go and pick up all our bags of lime and bring them all over close to this field because we're out already <laughs> that's that's how ridiculously uh, out of whack this field is we, we didn't even make it a couple hundred feet oh we just had some deer on the front glass so let's go and we're gonna start doing our uh, doing our refills the proper way so we're going to you know what we should be doing actually is using the other tractor with the front end loader so we can bring the bags over and uh, load this one up so let's get the front end loader put onto this little tractor and uh, go pick up a couple of lime bags and bring them back we're definitely going to need the weight to carry two lime bags with this little tractor because this thing will definitely not uh, handle that weight at all. So let's get this dropped off. Get our pallet fork put on. I think our weight, yeah, it's way over in the other, uh, the other shed there. So we will go over the other shed and pick up our weight. Uh, this is going to be fun. Trying to get this attached. I think I must have, I don't know what the heck I did to get this in here. I think I must have backed in when I was putting this away. Let's see if we can Kind of get close. Fingers crossed it'll oh good, it's gonna connect. Phew. But we're gonna be fighting a, a losing battle there trying to get that weight on. Okay, let's get out of here and we'll go pick up a couple bags of lime and bring them back over. We'll fill up our uh, fill up our spreader and get back to work. Now I'd love it if I could bring over four bags, but uh, I remember what happened with the big tractor with four bags, so I think we'll just focus on two. So let's get this spread out. I think we're going to have to uh, push these bags over to the side, get them close enough. like that 
that, you munyuk. Goodness. Okay, let's get the times a little bit closer. Nice. We got two bags. Good. That should give us a couple of fills from each bag. Just because that fertilizer spreader we've got, it's not super big. So each one of these bags I'm hoping should do two, maybe three fills. Now the thing we're going to have to deal with is we're probably going to have to drop that uh, fertilizer spreader down. Oh good, I did drop it down to the ground because this tractor is not going to pick these up high enough otherwise. It's such a short tractor. Okay, let's get these filled up. Back up right here. Set them down to the ground, but we won't, we won't get the forks out of them. We'll just leave it like that. Come back for another fill when, uh, when we need to. Beautiful. Let's get back out into the field and spread another 200 feet of lime. <laughs> it's crazy how fast the lime goes. I wish I wish I would have had the money to buy like a, a spreader that could hold six or eight bags, other than not even being able to hold one complete bag in the uh, in the hopper here. But what you gonna do? We had a we had a limited budget, and we uh, we got what we could get, and we're gonna make it work. Well, come on, if we can fit the strip, it would be nice. We're gonna come up short. This field is so big. It's just so long. It's it's awkward. Had it been like a square shape, it probably only would would go from about the edge of this pond over to the, to the fence over there. And that would be nice and easy and convenient for, uh, for working in. Oops, because I don't need to stop the engine. We're going to be getting back in it right away here. Get back out to the field. If this gets ridiculously long, we'll probably end up doing a jump cut to, uh, to bring you back when we're when we're finished. But uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, if uh, if things are going well and get a nice big chunk done here on the next couple of couple of runs may not have to jump cut it <laughs> I missed a chunk right in that corner Ooh, that's gonna drive me nuts we're gonna have to go and fix that up for sure I'm just hoping we've got enough lime with how fast this stuff is going out good lord and we're empty So I know that uh, I haven't seen any comments from the last video. I was kind of asking about uh, animals and you know, do we want to look at getting some sheep, do we want to uh, put a pen with a sheep, do we want to try and modify the pig pen and put the sheep inside the pig pen, like move the, move the 
the grazing field for the pigs and cut a chunk out of it so we can put the sheep in there. We want to put the sheep right at the beginning, the entrance of the, uh, of the grass field we're in now. We want to put it off side, beside the pig enclosure, like so many things we discussed in the last episode. I mean, I can always drive up the grass right here to get around if we do put the sheep there. I just think it would look a little bit awkward. And uh, we definitely don't want it to look awkward. We want it to look good. Um, the other option that we always have, of course, is to wait until uh, wait until we have enough money to buy the chunk of land beside us or another chunk of land down the road somewhere and uh, we can wait to do sheep then. Um, the other thing to look at is this map has I think it's three farms that uh, yeah, which makes sense from the map name. It has three farms that you can use as your starting farm and I've chosen the one that had pigs but I think one of the farms actually has a sheep enclosure on it. I think one of the other farms has a cattle enclosure on it. So we do always have the option of buying one of those other farms that has everything ready made, ready to rock and roll. It's probably gonna cost a bloody fortune to do so, but it would be, um, it would be ready to rock and roll. We wouldn't have to build anything. We wouldn't have to do anything. So I'm not sure if that's an option. That's actually just really quick. Let's pop it open and look at where those farms are. So we've got this one here, 281,000 to buy. And the other one I want to say is, is it this one? Yeah. This one. It's field two, three, and four. This is two hundred and fifty-five thousand. So I think that that would take a long time to build one of those guys up. Um, and this one has both have uh, bale storage and water triggers on them, but I can't remember. I think this one has the big cow barn right here, and then this is all pasture for the cows. And then this one has, I think this is the sheep enclosure over here, and there's a pasture here. Um, we can go and take a look at those houses and check it out uh, when the time gets closer. But, um, yeah, I just, I would really love to see if we can get into more more animals, different different production stuff, right? Let's say we've got got the greenhouse going on doing tomatoes we've got the pigs going on but i would love to have some more specialized productions going on and i know the nice thing about the sheep like i was saying you, you get the wool for sure but i don't know if they do the milk for sheep in this one as well why are you not i swore i put this down why is it not lowering? What in the world is going on? There we go. Now it's nice and low. Hopefully these will open up. There. That's better. <laughs> Don't know what the heck was going on there. Alright, let's get back out to it. So I do think... Uh, yeah, we've done quite a bit in this field, but this is going to take a considerable amount of time. So I think what we'll do is we'll just jump from here and uh, we'll bring you back when this field is ready to rock and roll. That way, just uh, watch me drive around at uh, 10 kilometers an hour dropping line while I'm. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm going to jump cut this right here. And we'll bring you back when 100% completely lined and be a rock and roll.
everybody. We just got done getting the lime spread on the field and we had just a little bit of lime left over here so we've got it uh, dropped out of the old spreader and we'll get it picked up put away somewhere. Don't know where we're gonna hide this just yet but we'll get it somewhere Maybe we'll put it over uh, over in this corner by where we had the uh, the weight, just to get it out of the way so it's inside. Beautiful. All right. I think we're going to leave this small tractor tucked somewhere as well. Maybe just in here beside the baler. And that'll leave us room to put the big tractor over in the other in the other spot right beside it. Look at how dirty this thing is. Jeez. I know that you don't need to keep your stuff clean and you don't need to buy pressure washers, but I really think we're going to pick one up and I think we'll put it in this bay with the fuel. We'll put it down in the corner here so. Maybe we'll get this stuff reorganized and we will uh, we'll get ourselves a pressure washer here. Well, let's get the pressure washer first. Uh, I believe it's under tools, pressure washer. Go right here in the corner. Perfect. Okay, let's let's bring this bad boy in and give it a bath cuz good lord this this thing is so dirty. Get it all nice and cleaned up. Oh. You going to let me Okay, good. Thought maybe we were too close to the fuel and it was not going to let us fire up the pressure washer, but Looks like everything is working out just fine. Beautiful. Now that looks a hell of a lot better than it did. Good stuff. I like the nice clean equipment for sure. There we go. We got ourselves a nice clean tractor. And uh, our field is good. It's got good lime coverage out there. So while I was doing all this liming, I was actually thinking about uh, this is a pasture for the pigs. And I wanted to go into the construction tab and just see if I could change the size of this pasture because uh, I do have a mod in here where uh, when you're under animals and you look at pigs and you see here the uh, expandable pastures I just don't know if I'm able to oh it's gonna delete the whole thing Yeesh. that's not good I was hoping that it was gonna let me take out little little pieces Oh, it's going to take the whole barn with and the sh Damn! That sucks. I was hoping I could take off this chunk right here and then just close it in like this. And, um... And we'd be able to take the sheep's enclosure and put it, like, over here and, uh, and use this area for the sheep. But it looks like that is not going to be possible. So... Uh, I don't really want to knock out a piece of field to uh, to put some animals in, but I think we might have to. And I think, like, honest to goodness, I think that this area right here is, is kind of the best. Um, we, were, we were putting it like this, and I was saying it's going to close off our access to this grass field do it but I really do think that this will be the spot to do it when we do and 
that way we'll have both of our animal enclosures nice and close together we can do all the food all the water all of everything right close by each other and we don't have to deal with going all over the place oh i can see i missed a couple little splotches of lime out there but i think all in all we're, we're in good shape so i think that's something that we'll look at when we get enough money which is going to be after we probably make some silage because we've got no more crop to uh no more crop to sell we've got no more silage bales to sell and uh i think that we're pretty much just waiting for this grass to grow so we can we can chop it up and uh, and make some silage so i think what we're going to do is now that our fields are all prepped and we've got nothing going on. I think that we maybe have some tomatoes that I should have sold last month that I didn't sell that are going to be much cheaper now. Oh yeah, we've got so many tomatoes over here. Five pallets. Ay ay ay. What's our uh, tomato cost looking like here? Uh, right here. Tomatoes. 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 What are we at? Price is still actually pretty good. Oh, it's supposed to be a max of eleven fifty-five, and we're at like twelve hundred something. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, we're gonna tag that place, and we are going to load these guys up. Let's bring the truck over because I can't carry more than two pallets at a time on the uh, on the front end loader i mean i stuck four on there once and dropped half of the tomatoes out onto the ground so um let's get the truck moved over there and then we will grab the front end loader and we'll load up some load up some tomatoes on the truck and deliver them over to that uh, point of sale okay, so let's uh let's get this done Be nice to get a few thousand dollars coming back in considering that we need 26,000 for the sheep but like I said we're definitely not gonna be able to afford to do that until we uh, we get some silage coming in so it's gonna be at least another month of the grass growing and then a month or two of the silage fermenting before we're gonna have any uh, any chance at getting some money for silage. Just gonna pull over here. So we're out of the way. Let's go get the front loader and we'll get this stuff done. Run our tomatoes over and make some moolah. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna time lapse this loading experience because it's probably gonna be a struggle. <laughs> and if I do the time lapse, I can get the outside view, which will be perfect because I need the outside view to load with any efficiency whatsoever when it comes to pallets. They're a pain in the arse to pick up and a pain in the arse to set back down. So let's get this done for you guys and we'll run them over to the point of sale and get these tomatoes all done. Well, we went from what was supposed to be a time lapse down to a jump cut because, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you saw the absolute mess that I made of trying to put a simple pallet or two of potato tomatoes in the back of a bloody truck. Uh, so, yeah, I cut. And I played, and I messed around, and I finally got the crap in here, but geez, look at this man. I just wish that they would give you a good perspective on getting the, the pallet forks into the thing. Like, I've driven heavy equipment in my life. I've run front-end loaders, I've run dozers, I've run excavators, I've run graders, I've run it all. I've never in my life had a problem seeing where the forks are 
when they're going into a pallet. Never. But the perspective in these vehicles, I think it's just it's just too low. You should be elevated up a little bit higher in the seat so that you can get a better angle. And even with this fancy tool that people made for this lean tool so you can hit the shift key and lean, it helps a bit, but when you're too low, you're still stuck looking at the hood of the tractor. You can't actually see the times your forks when you've got them in the position they need to be to pick stuff up. And it's just, it's not, it's not good. It needs to be uh, a higher point of view so that you can, uh, you can see what you're working on. We got tomatoes selling like crazy. I get these ratchet straps off. And uh, yeah, we're making some good money. This is nice. Every little bit helps out. And we wanted to get to 26,000 so that we could get sheep. And like I said, it's probably not going to happen until we get silage. But not bad. Three thousand bucks worth of tomato. I like it. Okay, let's get back over to the farm and I think that we will uh, we'll have a rest and we'll probably, let's just see when it's time to start planting crop again, but we'll probably be back when it's time to get some crop into field six. And uh, I was thinking about doing the lime and the fertilizer on that field, but it makes a lot more sense to wait till we've got the crop in so that precision farming can guide us with the proper amount of fertilizer and lime for the crop that we have in the field, rather than just doing a, a generic spread need to over lime or over fertilize the crop that we're putting in the field. So we'll wait until we've decided what crop we're gonna do. Like I said, I'm leaning heavily towards canola, but we'll, uh, we'll find out when the time comes, but let's just take a quick look and see when canola goes in. Uh, planting season for canola was way back then. You can only plant it then on this map. Wow, wheat, barley, and canola can only go in the ground in winter. I was not paying attention to that. I thought for sure we were going to get something in March, April here. So looks like we may be stuck working on oat or soybeans uh let's see what we've got for money from crops so oats not bad soybeans not bad as well uh soybeans max out at 2200 and oat max is out at 1153 but soybeans are probably not the best yield but I think that's gonna be that's gonna be what we're looking for. I guess we're gonna we're gonna go for some soybeans in field six, over behind our pig enclosure here. So I think what we'll do for now is we'll we'll go in and we'll rest through the rest of February here, and we'll see where we stand money wise and uh, and. Make sure our pigs and our greenhouse, or our greenhouse is definitely going to be full of water because I maxed that thing up. But we'll see what our pig food situation is looking like. Oh, we're snowing again in February. Come on, get out the door. We can make it. Let's go check on our pigs here real quick. Thought that was a pig sitting over there. It's just one of the deer. <laughs> like, jailbreak. We've still got lots of food, almost 5,000 liters. Look at that, almost 7,000 liters of slurry of it. Um, and like I said, I'm guessing this is this is the manure that we've got in here, almost 4,000 liters. Now, I don't know if manure, if you can spread manure for fertilizer as well. I think that's, yeah, right manure spreader so we could do this for fertilizer as well as the slurry but I don't want to buy another trailer just to spread manure on the ground so we'll probably just end up hauling our manure away and selling it off I know that it's not the best priced 
item to sell, but it's free. We didn't pay for it, so we can take it to the uh, the manure heap and we can get rid of it. So something else that we can look at uh, for future uh, future funds. But let's take a quick look at if there's any contracts out available. Only a cultivating and the ground is frozen, so we're definitely not doing that. Um, okay. Let us go and rest. We need to get into... We gotta go all the way to April to plant soybeans, but I'm sure we'll have contracts in March that we can look at doing to make a little bit more money. To tide us over until we get to uh, soybean season here. Let's have a one more rest. Set it to 7 a.m. It's March. I hope the sun's gonna be up by 7 in the morning. We'll see. Take a look at what we've got going on. And spring has sprung. This is good. The sun is up. Seven in the morning. We could probably even get up a little bit earlier. Uh, let's go take a quick peek at the food situation. Still pretty good food. Lots of slurry. Lots of manure. Sort. We're we're doing really good. I think we're in really really good shape. And let's check out our grass situation. So it's ready to harvest. Uh, our expected yield is only 94%, but, I mean, better than nothing. So what we're going to do is because um, we can't plant our soybeans until April, uh, we'll probably spend March doing the grass cut and bailing, getting our silage, getting that stuff all going on. And then when April comes along, we will get our soybeans planted in the seal, uh, seal, in the field, and uh, we'll go from there. But I think for now, what we'll do is we'll bring this episode to a close. And I know there wasn't a ton of action in here, but that's kind of what this series is about. We're just relaxing, having fun, and uh, getting stuff done. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the episode today and I'm really looking forward to the next one already because we are definitely going to be making silage and getting ourselves ready to rock and roll and get some soybeans in the ground. So when I bring you back, we'll be jumping into the, uh, the big Massey and cutting some grass. So hopefully we'll see you out for the next one. Take care, everybody.